Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that the Spirit of God will enlighten us in the Word and give us grace and strength, determination and focus to be obedient to the Word, every part of the Word in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your people, children of God. And thank you for those who are joining us for the first time today at the Bible study. Everywhere, both here and in all the places we are connected together. We're asking, Lord, that today you enlighten us in the Word and help us, Lord, to be doers of the Word in Jesus' name. We pray that we will not count the word of God as common, as ordinary, and that we will receive it as a word coming from a loving Father in Jesus' name. Prepare us, Lord, for your coming. That, Lord, everything we hear, everything we learn, will move us forward and will make progress in our preparation for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we are coming to study the word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We are reading from chapter 10 verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. But all things edify not. In verse 24, it says, Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Verse 31. In verse 31, it tells us, It says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Those verses we have read uh, give us the summary and the very focus of the whole passage we're looking at today. And the topic tonight is living only for the glory of God. God, a creator, God, a redeemer, merits and deserves our heart, our life our attention and in everything we do we consider him whether those things we do are personal or they relate to other people or they relate to worship or they relate to any area of life whether we're in church or we're outside the church God must be a focus. We want to exalt Him. We want to honor Him. We want to lift Him up. We want to glorify Him. Whatsoever, therefore, we do. We're eating, we're drinking, or whatsoever it may be, anytime and anywhere, we do all to the glory of God, to the honor of God, and to please the Lord every time. That's the way we live. And that is the only way a child of God and somebody who is in the family of God will live. He wants to honor God. He wants to glorify God. And it will be in your heart as a child of God, born again, converted, on your way to heaven to always lift him up, always glorify him. You are letting your light so shine before men and before all people that they will see your good works, they'll see your godly action, they'll see your godly lifestyle, and they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. It is a purpose and it is a practical life. It is the pattern of our lives that in everything we live only for the glory of God. As we look at the passage tonight, we're divided into three parts. And part one is the practical purpose of glorifying God and edifying 
others you understand god loves the creation and all the creatures he has made in this world is not willing that anyone should perish and so everything we do if we do it to the glory of god if we do it to please the lord we want to edify others enlighten others educate others lift others up and bring others close to the lord that's how we live, what I'm doing, what I'm saying, how I'm acting, and wherever I'm going, am I evangelizing others, am I edifying others, and am I encouraging others? I want to show that the purpose of my life, the progress that you make in your life, and the practical things that we do is to glorify the Lord and to edify others if that is the case we'll have to forget ourselves forget what our own pleasure and forget what we like what we want and what suits us everything we do we even sometimes start to deny ourselves so that others will be edified number one then is the practical purpose of glorifying God and edifying others point number two the personal prize of glorifying God and eating without offense we want to pay the price sometimes it will not be comfortable or convenient sometimes it will not be what we're used to but we want to help other people and we don't want to create any offense any barrier between anyone and god any barrier between the sinner and the savior any barrier between the sage and the sanctifier any barrier before the children of god and god our father and if anything we do anything we eat anything we act out anything we practice is going to be a barrier an offense between men and god we want to cancel that from our lives so that we can pay the personal price of glorifying god and eating and living without offense. Point number three is the pleasing pattern. The pattern of life that pleases the Lord. The pattern of action that pleases the Lord. The pattern of behavior, of lifestyle, of character that pleases the Lord. The pleasing pattern for glorifying God and evangelizing others. Actually, that's one of the main purpose the Lord has put us here on earth. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And he tells us that God is not willing that anyone shall perish. God is not willing that anyone there in the world, anyone there in the community, anyone there that you come across, God is not willing that anyone shall perish, but that all, all men, all, all people, all, all his creatures shall come unto repentance. And so we want to so live, we want to so act, we want to so behave, we want to so preach, we want to so do everything that we, our lives, everything we do will be evangelizing others and bringing them into the kingdom of God. The pleasing pattern for glorifying God and evangelizing others let's come to point number one point number one is the practical purpose of glorifying God and edifying others we'll come back to first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23 first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23 all things are lawful for me but all things are not expedient Let, let's rephrase that for you to understand it's saying all things that are lawful for me are not expedient is saying there are many things i may do that may be all right for me and that may be lawful for me that may be proper for me to do but they do not all uh, have expediency they are not all profitable for example everybody is sitting down and uh, i decide you must uh, you want to stand up when you do that although you have the right to stand up anytime 
but if it distracts the attention of other people that's part of the things that are lawful for you but not expedient you know we have many words in the dictionary and it is right it is proper at the right time at the normal time to use any of the words in the dictionary but if uh, it's proper to use the word it's acceptable to use the word it's grammatically correct to use the word but when you pronounce that word in an audience of men and women it's not um, it's not profitable to people that's what he's saying although something may be lawful although something may be proper although something may be acceptable generally but you consider at this time is it expedient at this time it is profitable at this time will it edify other people that's why it says in the second part of that verse it says all things are lawful for me but all things do not edify all things edify not as a result of that since you know that all your action might be acceptable your action may not be condemnable but yet you are considering is it right is it proper is it profitable? Is it expedient? Will it edify at this time? That's why you have verse 24. In verse 24, it says, Let no man seek his own. Well, there are times you seek your own comfort, but if you're seeking your comfort at the expense of other people, there are times you seek your own profit, but if you're seeking your profit at the expense of other people, that will not be right. It says, but every man another's wealth, every man another's salvation, every man another's progress, every man another's success, every man another's happiness. Let no man seek his own at the expense of other people, at the expense of the joy of other people. Don't enjoy yourself at the expense of the happiness of others, but every man another's wealth. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 12, it says, All things are lawful unto me but all things are not expedient so important is that principle that paul the apostle repeats it over and over he says lawful things corinthians yes i can do that yes i know you can i'm, I'm permitted to do that yet i know you are permitted and there's nothing wrong in that i could do that yes i know there's nothing wrong but does that thing edify in the home does that thing edify in your spiritual life does that thing edify for the promotion of other people and the progress of other people does that thing edify for the growth and development of other believers is that thing edifying it says all things are lawful unto me but all things are not expedient look at this all things are lawful for me but I will not be brought under the power of any. I will not be brought under the power of any. What he's saying there is, there are times we develop a habit. And habits are easy to form and they are difficult to break. Once they become a habit, you're doing something and you say it's expedient it's acceptable i don't see anything wrong in it but it's hurting other people it's injuring other people it's uh, downplaying uh, the, the the need of other people and it's crushing uh, other people they are lawful they are acceptable there's nothing wrong with them uh, on the surface but then it says as you continue like that it becomes a habit an injurious habit a dangerous habit you are not able to shake yourself from and you are brought under the power of that thing you have been justifying it's all right i think i can do it look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says meats for the belly and belly for meats but god shall destroy both each and them 
it's saying uh, we can take meat and we ought to eat appropriately but then it says if you form the habit of eating what is injurious to your body and you're not thinking of the future you're not thinking of your health all you have is i didn't steal the food i didn't steal the meat it's available for me it's provided for me and you stop yourself and stop yourself until you almost become a glutton remember that meat eventually will pass away and then even the body eventually when you die and you might die before your time because you are taking things that you don't you ought not to take it says now the body is not for fornication but for the lord and the lord for the body verse 14 says in verse 14 and god has both raised up the lord and will also raise us up by his own power it says dedicate that body to the lord and understand the the goal of god and what glorifies god is that you protect you preserve that body until the time that christ will raise up that body the lord will raise up that body for his own glory the point is whatever you take into your body whatever you comes out of your mouth whatever comes out of your life should be edifying should be profitable you should not be brought under the power of anything any habit you are developing romans chapter 14 reading from verse 16 romans chapter 14 we're reading from verse 16 is still telling us about the life we ought to live let not then your good be evil spoken of you're doing something good but people don't understand you're doing something good and people feel that this is against our peace it's against our progress it's against everything we stand for and in your mind you are saying but it's good they don't understand but it's good they can't see it but it's good it says those things that are good that you're doing you must evaluate is it right for me to do this if other people are offended by the good thing i'm doing let not then your good be evil spoken of there are times a man may do something not simple acceptable and normal may do something towards a lady and then the um, the wife of that man is wondering what's my husband doing this my husband is giving money you're doing something good you are helping the sisters you are helping everybody not only men men and women but as you give the money to the woman every time your wife does not know you are not in agreement with your wife and you don't make it open to your wife i'm going to give this amount to sister so and so or to mrs so and so because she has a special need what you do is good but your good can be evil spoken of the husband of that woman may be thinking why is this man always sending money to my wife and will not even inform me and will not let me know you are doing good but the good is evil spoken of look at verse 17 in verse 17 for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink meat is good food is good help me give a day's uh, amount uh, to so and so help me pass on uh, this uh, food stuff to so and so all that is good and this drink uh, help me give so and so all that is good but do not do it with suspicion do not do it that the mind of the people around you and the mind of those who are connected with the people you are giving doses to they are feeling why is she doing this why is he doing that for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost you must understand that platform 
and you must understand uh, that uh, pivot and you must understand that foundation that every time you consider righteousness every time you consider peace the peace of god every time you consider the joy in the holy ghost and every action must come out to make other people more righteous even the person you are giving what you are giving to maybe you give them attention maybe you give them food they themselves the human beings a man is always sending this to that woman and does that help the righteousness of that woman and the peace in their home in their family and the joy in the holy ghost i know that i'm living a transparent life we must make sure that whatever we do and whatever we're giving does not bring offense at any time we're looking at verse 18 in verse 18 it says for he that in these things serveth christ is acceptable to god and approved of men verse 19 tells us then let us therefore therefore because of all these considerations because it's not everything that's acceptable that's also expedient because of that let us follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another the things we do to edify another it tells us in uh, matthew chapter 5 verse 16 matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 16 let your light so shine do everything in the open do everything and be transparent your heart your thoughts your will your mind everything you do is transparent and there is nothing that you are doing that you say i know this is good but because uh, these people will not understand i will do it secretly i will do it privately it says don't do that bring everything to the open if you're doing something for the will of god the children of god should know that this is the will of god and there is nothing that will bring a secrecy in your personal life it says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and they will see those things as good they will see those things as acceptable they will see those things as christian uh, hospitality as we're helping other people that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven it's all to edify other people and i pray that our lives will be edified to all other people around us in jesus name philippians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 4 in philippians chapter 2 looking at verse 4 it tells us it says look not every man on his own things you know as children of god we are members of the family of god don't live an isolated life isolated in the sense that i want to do this i know it's right i go ahead I want to go there i know it's right i go ahead you live as if you are all by yourself you do not consider how will my brothers feel about this how will our sisters feel about this how will family members feel about this the thing that i do you act as if you are an independent in different persons you do not you do not have any any kind of thought about other people it says we're christians and we're members of the family of god look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others on the things of others if i say that word that way how does it affect her how does it affect him if i do this good thing 
this way, how does it affect the people around me? If I uh, act this way, how does it help? How does it edify? How does it build up? How does it encourage? How does it give other people progress? Every man also on the things of others. In verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the mind of Christ. That will be considerate that whatever will hinder the salvation of sinners, whatever will hinder the happiness of saints, and whatever will hinder the development of the disciples of Christ, that I will not do. My mind, my heart is to edify other people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verse 12, it says, even so, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, wonderful to be zealous and wonderful to be passionate and passionate about doing this and passionate about doing that. For example, you are passionate about evangelism. You are passionate about going to preach the gospel to other people. And then, uh, you know, your wife is at home or your husband is at home. You will not say, my husband, my wife, I am going to such and such a place. I'm going to preach the gospel. You take your Bible and then you go out. He does, she doesn't know. He doesn't know when you go out and uh, why you go out and when you come back because after all I am zealous and I don't want anything to hinder me whether they know it or not whether they agree or not whether they support or not here is my life here is my zeal that's good you are winning sinners outside you're losing family members at home you're doing good things to the outside people you're zealous you are passionate here is what i must do but the people who are closest to you you don't care whether they are happy or not whether they are holy or not whether they are in agreement or not that means that those who are close to you they can perish they can go to hell they can be angry you can do things that will upset them and you don't care about their relationship with god all you care is about your zeal all you care is about your passion is telling us that is not Christian character. Even so ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Everything we do, see that you consider the edification and the upliftment and the profit and the progress of other people. It's not enough to be zealous. It's not enough to be passionate. We must consider what edifies other people. We're coming to point number two. Point number two is the personal price of glorifying God and eating without offense. That word eating there is representative of everything we do to nourish ourselves. Everything we do to make ourselves healthy. Everything we do to make ourselves more developed. What we take in develops our body. What we take in makes our body to grow and to have strength and health. So everything we do, we must do it in such a way that it is without offense. And the grace of God is there as the children of God. When we were sinners, when we didn't know the Lord, all we considered was, this is me and this is my life and this is what I'm going to do. We were answerable to nobody. Anything we did, we did independently. Anything we did, because we were unbelievers, we said, here is my life, and there is my chance, here is my time, and have a life to live. And then we just went out and branched everywhere and did whatever it was. But now we're Christians. Now we're born again. 
that we're children of God and we consider whatsoever we do. Let's come to verse 25 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, Whatever is sold in the shambles, that is in the market, at the grocery, that each asking no question for conscience sake. You see, the Christian, even what he goes to buy, he looks at his conscience. Even what he goes to possess or to purchase, looks at what's my conscience like? Where is this coming from? Is this one sacrificed to idol? And is this one already dedicated and devoted to occult powers? If he knows that, and he knows that this is of the devil, and this is from idol worship, and this is from the culture of the people that might remove something either from their body, like their ear, and they dedicate it to their own idol god, and then they send to other places like other countries, and those other countries, they know that this thing is coming from this place and that place, and it's already dedicated to their idol there, and then they want to buy anything. They will consider what they're buying, and if their conscience tells them, but you know where this is coming from, and you know the culture of these people, and you know the occultism of these people, are you going to buy this? Your conscience will tell you as a Christian, this will not glorify God. Anything will buy therefore, anything will purchase therefore, anything will possess therefore, we must consider the glory of God. Look at verse 26. For the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. Verse 27 tells us, If any of them that believe not bid you to Ephesus, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you each, asking no question for conscience sake. It says, always go with your conscience. Anywhere you are going, a neighbor invites you and just ordinarily says, a friend, I just want to be hospitable and I'm inviting you to lunch. So you, it says that's all right. You can even use that as uh, an opportunity to preach the gospel onto that family. Or maybe, um, you know, they're just happy and they invite you to come and eat and then you eat with them. But it says, if there is any question about what you are eating, that those people, it's not just an ordinary lunch, they remember their idol, they remember their gods, and they want to make some sacrifice to their God, and some festivities to their God, and they are inviting you, then your conscience comes in, how are you going to respond? Verse 28, in verse 28, but if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols. This is sacrificed unto idols. Your neighbor calls you and he says, Come for lunch. And then somebody tells you, It's not just an ordinary lunch. They are remembering their father, their mother who died some years ago. And they believe that as they do this and they give food to people over there in the great beyond, and then there will be mercy and uh, the God, will, their God will take uh, that their father or their mother out of uh, the place of punishment and bring them to paradise to say, no, I cannot be part of that. I'll be supporting the superstition of the people, the idolatry of the people. I'll be supporting an unchristian pattern of life. Or they say this is sacrifice to idols because their idols have told them, their false prophets have told them, the reason you are not progressing and the reason you are having bad luck and the reason you don't have a job is because, uh, you know, the gods are angry. And what the gods want you to do now is that you prepare a feast and then you will sacrifice that to the gods and then you call your neighbors good people 
people and honest people, especially religious people, to come and eat, and then their gods will now be appeased. That's idolatry. It says, But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that should eat unto you, and for conscience' sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Look at the next verse in verse 29. It says, Conscience I say, not thine own. Conscience I say, not thine own, but of the other. Have you met uh, Christians? Have you listened to some Christians? And they say, I know what I'm doing. My conscience does not condemn me. He doesn't consider, she doesn't consider the conscience of other people. All I know is I can do that. All I know is I can interact like that. All I know is I can give that. All I know is I can go there. All I know is I can eat that. My conscience does not condemn me. But it says, conscience I say, not thine own but of the other the christian life is a communion life it is a life that considers other people and when we are saved we consider how our actions how our disposition how everything will affect other people and uh, you know there are people they have developed what we call thick skin and whatever they are doing, you might be looking at them and thinking that they will get a message out of that look. No, they don't care what other people think. They don't care how it affects the conscience of other people, husband and wife, mother and father. They are discussing on the table and little children are there and they are talking about their local leader in the church. They are talking about the church. They do not have the understanding that although they think they are justified, thinking and talking like they are talking, that the conscience of that little girl, the conscience of that little boy, is being affected and the child will not talk and the child is saying so that is how the leaders are that is how uh, those uh, members of the church that is how they are that child there has a tender conscience and what you may just talk about and forget about after you have taken your meal the child is thinking all right when I grow older, I don't think I will remain in daddy's church, in mommy's church, because daddy and mommy are just there, and every time at the table, they always condemn everything going on in the church. I'm going to leave that church once I have my way. We destroy the conscience of others because we don't think about what we're doing. And once we say, I'm all right, I'm justified, I can say, I can do, I can go, I can eat, I can take anything I want. My conscience does not condemn me. The conscience of other people too, the matter. Conscience I say, not thine own, but of, of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? In verse 30, verse 30 says, For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of? For that for which I give thanks. It's just telling us that everything we do, everything we eat, and the life we live must not be ways of things. It tells us in Romans chapter 14, verse 20. Romans chapter 14, we're reading from verse 20. It says, For meat destroy not the work of God. For me, destroy not the work of God. Always justify yourself. It's all right. I can take that. And then other people's consciences are defiled, are disturbed, 
are distracted and other people's consciences are oppressed and eventually they say okay if that's the way uh, he wants to be him if that's the way she wants to be him i'll get myself adjusted i've been holding on to the standard of the doctrine of the word of god but since this is the way they want it i will let down we destroy the work of god we destroy the ministry of the gospel because we're so much attached to this meat or to this action without wanting to give up and paying the price of glorifying God without offending others. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed appear, but it is evil for that man who eated with offense. All things indeed appear. You know, somebody saying, I know there's no uncleanness here. I know there's no fornication here. I know there's no adultery here. All I'm doing, all I'm saying, the way I'm acting, my conscience tells me I am pure. Maybe you are. But then what you are doing becomes evil to other people. You must be conscious of that. It is evil for that man. It is evil for that woman. It is evil for that so-called Christian who eateth with offense. And there are times that people will say, well, that's his way. Although we are offended, we cannot be talking every time. Although we are offended, we cannot be passing comments every time. And she has made up her mind, that's the way to go. She knows it's offensive, but she's enjoying it and she loves it. So we have to keep quiet because if somebody does something wrong, you say, my brother, my sister, how did you do this? How could you do that? Don't you know that is wrong? Okay, if that offends you, I didn't know that well. You know, get at you, I will, I will consider it and then he does it or she does it another time and then you talk again you'll be tired you'll be fed up it will look like you yourself you have a problem therefore you keep quiet and you say all right it's now an habitual offense it's now a deliberate offense it's now a premeditated offense let him go ahead Ephraim has joined himself has joined herself unto idols let him alone let her alone it becomes a permanent offense and it disturbs the fellowship and the relationship between you and the members of the family of god in verse 21 in verse 21 it says it is good neither to eat flesh i'll deny myself of the vitamins i'll deny myself of the nutrients i deny myself of what i might get from that a good thing if it's going to bring an offense it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother thy sister thy husband thy wife thy parents the pastor the member stumbled or is offended or is made weak i pray that food or these uh, common things will not deny us or destroy the fellowship of the people of god in jesus name let somebody say amen, amen. we're looking at psalm 106 reading from verse 13 psalm 100 and six we're reading from verse 13 in psalm 106 verse 13 the son forgot his works they waited not for his counsel and you know many times whenever we have a good program thank god all our programs are good let somebody say amen, amen. we have a good program a retreat and then uh, you know our members will say that's the best retreat i ever attended it spoke to me and it ironed out some rough edges of my life it was so good it was so wonderful i never attended any retreat like that before after two weeks after one month what happens some people some forget his works and his wonders 
and everything they learned and all the consecrations they made and all the things they voiced out before the Lord they soon forget and they go back to square one and they go back to what they were doing before that wonderful retreat came in their lives that's what he's saying about these people it said they soon forgot his works they waited not for his counsel you see there are people who are used to that they don't consider how does that glorify god how does that edify the church how does that affect the brethren how does this make me have spiritual progress they don't wait anything that occurs to them that's habitual and they just go at it they waited not for his counsel look at verse 14 in verse 14 but they lost it exceedingly in the wilderness and they tempted god in the desert look at verse 15 now in verse 15 he gave them their request that the request for food and the request for meat and the request for we're fed up of this this one is monotonous this one is too regular this one is too ordinary we we'll want something new and something fresh and want to go this direction all right that's what you want he gave them their request and sent leanness into their soul there are things that people do that they enjoy and their body will enjoy that their flesh will enjoy that and their life in general will enjoy that and they are happy and the lord says that's what you want that's the way you want to go all right you can go ahead but that thing brings leanness into their soul that's why the lord is telling us and reminding us we shouldn't just be centered on what we eat and what we drink we should center on things that are eternal in john chapter 6 reading from verse 25 john chapter 6 reading from verse 25 and when they had found him on the other side of the sea they said unto him rabbi master teacher when camest thou hither in verse 26 verse 26 said jesus answered them and said verily verily i say unto you ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled you're seeking after me you're running after me and you are demanding for my attention and you are um, kind of expressing your appreciation for me and your love for me not because you have seen the miracles and you believe i am the savior i am the messiah i am the lord i am the king of kings and the lord of lords but because he did eat of the loaves and were filled you see our purpose matters i enjoy that because i enjoy that i want the lord he says are you seeking me because of money are you seeking me because of job are you seeking me because of material things of god are you seeking after me because i've given you this and you enjoy that he tells us now in verse 27 he says in verse 27 labor not for the meat which perishes you will soon forget about that it will be digested it will be passed into uh, the ways and it will it will be flushed away do not labor for the meat which perisheth but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life always consider that the meat which con which continues and the meat which endures and the sustainers which endures to life everlasting which the son of man shall give unto you for him as god the father sealed that's what he wants us to do and that's where he wants us to be he doesn't want us to live on material things alone what we can eat and what we can drink and the material blessings and the secular things we can get from the lord and the opportunities we have secular opportunities that will come from the lord let's labor and let's pray and let's possess and let's have 
things that are spiritual and things that are eternal and things that will glorify God and things that will fulfill the ministry and things that will fulfill the calling that God has given the church so that the work of God and the development of the people and the spiritual progress of the people will be number one in our hearts, not the material things. We'll come to point number three now. In point number three is the pleasing pattern for glorifying God and evangelizing others. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Verse 32. In verse 32, give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Verse 33, it says in verse 33, but even as I please all men, that, that's, the, that's maturity. Even as I please all men, that's recognition of your calling. The recognition of why you are in the kingdom and the recognition of why the Lord has put you in that place at this time. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, not seeking my own joy, not seeking my own pleasure, and not seeking my own happiness but the profit of many that they may be saved that they may be saved that's the purpose that's the pattern and that is the commitment we ought to have in living the life we live the pleasing pattern for glorifying God and evangelizing others. Let's look at verse 31 again. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. It says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, uh, don't only concentrate on the eating and the drinking because now it says whatsoever ye do anytime, anywhere, with any man, with any woman, in the church, outside the church, everywhere, whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6. In Second Corinthians chapter 4, Reading from verse 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. When you are saved, darkness passes away and light comes and that light shines out of darkness and shines in the earth to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It gives you light. It gives you a light image. And it shows the way clearly. This is how to worship God. This is how to glorify God. This is how to think of God every time. And the light shines in your path every time. And that affects whatsoever you do. That affects whatsoever you go. It tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 17, is telling us about how we live and what we do that will bring glory to God, that will bring honor to God, that will exalt His name, that will make us to be at the background. And we're not thinking of what we enjoy and what we like and what pleases us but what pleases God all the time that's why it says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 and whatsoever ye do and whatsoever ye do in words or in deed in your speech and in your action whatsoever you do you do it on purpose you do it thoughtfully and you do it with the eye on the glory of God whatsoever anytime anywhere whether you are alone or you are with other people whether you are in the church with believers or you are out there in the world with unbelievers whatsoever you do it's a small thing 
is a big thing whatever it is do not consider this one pleases me i love this i like this therefore i will do it whatsoever you do a word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus whatever you cannot do in the name of the lord jesus will not glorify god giving thanks to god and the father by him giving thanks to god and giving thanks to the father by the lord jesus christ in verse 23 in verse 23 it says and whatsoever ye do do it heartily as unto the lord and not unto men verse 24 tells us knowing that of the lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the lord christ make everything you do be to the service of the lord to the conversion of sinners to the edification of saints to the development and the building up of the church for ye serve the lord christ matthew chapter 7 in verse 12 matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 12 therefore all things whatsoever 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 ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets it says whatever you read in the law that is in the old testament a part of the law or in the prophets all the rest of the old testament it says this is the purpose of the writing this is the purpose of the revelation that everything you do will be what to expect others to do unto you that's what glorifies god that's what honors god and that is what is going to give us reward on the other side in eternity when we leave this world we're coming back to first corinthians chapter 10 the statue first corinthians chapter 10 the statue give none offense give none offense you see in our lives we must uh, not be offensive offensive uh, you know you are with uh, the jews those who uh, knew god but they know god superficially all the same don't be an offense to them there are people who are religious denominational church goers all the same they know some basic things and they will not be wondering but this one says i'm born again and this one says i am holy and this one says i am righteous and this one even talks about the sanctified life and yet even those of us who don't claim to be sanctified or to be deep in the things of God, we know this to be wrong. Don't be an offense to those nominal churchgoers, not to the Gentiles. The Gentiles too, they have their proverbs and they have their pattern of life and they have some understanding of this is acceptable and this is not acceptable for example even though somebody is not a church man is not a church woman all she knows is well i'm a human being as a human being i i don't think it's right for a man uh, to steal away uh, the daughter in any family look at the child the child is just 14 the child is just 15 and this man has taken eloped with that a girl this is not right even the gentiles will say so there are gentiles that have a common knowledge of what is right what is acceptable and in our lives we're going to go beyond the gentiles we will not do anything offensive to the jew anything offensive to the gentiles nor to the church of god nor to the church of god when we come to church we learn of the doctrine of christ when we come to church we learn of all the principles of righteousness and holiness that god himself in his word has established and as a child of god it says give none offense neither to the jews neither to the gentiles nor to the church of god in second corinthians chapter 6 reading from verse 3 second corinthians chapter 6 reading from verse 3 giving no offense in anything 
It says, we're ministers giving no offense in anything. We are workers together with God, giving no offense in anything. We are members of the body of Christ. We are the mouthpiece of Christ. We are the feet of Christ. We are the hands of Christ. We are the eyes of Christ. We are the representatives of Christ here on earth. And therefore, we give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. In Philippians chapter 1, reading from verse 10. Philippians chapter 1, reading there from verse 10, that she may approve things that are excellent, that your lifestyle will be excellent, that your behavior will be excellent, that your disposition will be excellent, that everything you do, whether in church or outside church, everything you do, whether as an individual or corporately together with every other believer, that she may approve the things that are excellent, that she may be sincere and without offense, till the day of christ every day you live because we know christ can come at any time and his coming is imminent his coming is near and that coming is very soon and will be sudden it says until the day of christ that we will be sincere and without offense it tells us in verse 11 in verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. We're filled with the fruits of righteousness. When you fill a basket, you fill it to the point there is no space for any other sin to come in there. When you fill a bucket of water, you fill it to the brim and there is no space for any drop of liquid to come again. And it says our hearts, our lives should be filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ and that will bring glory to God and will bring praise unto God. In Acts chapter 24, reading from verse 15. Acts chapter 24, reading from verse 15. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. Verse 16, because of that resurrection and because of that coming day when the Lord will come and it will take us home because of that, herein do I exercise myself to always have a conscious voyage of offense toward God and towards men a conscious voyage of offense toward god that's part one toward men the jews and the gentiles and the church and the christian the believer everyone i do not want to have a conscience that is filled with offense toward anyone and because of the resurrection and because of the rapture and because of our expectation herein does everyone exercise himself or herself to always have a conscious voyage of offense toward God who sees every action, who sees every motive, who sees the heart, who sees every intention of the mind. No offense towards that God who sees everything and no offense towards men. We're coming back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're reading from verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things. You know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying, what I'm telling you, I tell myself. 
what I expect of you, I expect of myself. He was a Pharisee. Those Pharisees, they will make heavy bodies for other people that they will not touch with their fingers. They will say, do as I say, and do as I preach, and do as I give you instruction, but don't do as I do. They were not real followers of Christ. We know that. But Paul the Apostle said, I'm converted now. I'm a new creature in Christ now. And what I'm telling you, the qualification I believe will prepare you for heaven is the qualification I believe will prepare me for heaven and therefore what I'm asking of you I demand of myself even as I please all men in all things not seeking my own profit not seeking my own pleasure I break that habit of seeking to do what I want anytime, every time, not considering the conscience of other people, not considering the consecration of other people, not considering the consistency that other people want to maintain. What I want to do, I do. Paul the Apostle said, I will not be like that, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved that they may be saved when a sinner sees the action and the lifestyle of the preacher of the pastor of the minister that action and that behavior of that minister preacher should lead sinners to repentance and should lead them to salvation when a backslider sees the consistency and the consecration of a minister of a preacher and then the spirit of god taking that lifestyle of the minister of the preacher that should lead the backslider unto restoration that they may be saved and then when believers see the action and the consistency of a preacher of a minister the believer should want to have the salvation the final salvation they should want to endure unto the end that they will be saved because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but they that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved when people see our actions and they see our lifestyle it shall encourage them to be consistent and to endure unto the end that they may have the full salvation the final salvation that is coming to the lord and paul the apostle said i i, I value my ministry it says I preach after the preaching I don't think that ministry is over now I now please all men after preaching I now do things that will edify other people after the preaching not seeking my own profit but the profit of many of all those people are preached to that they may be saved it tells us in Romans chapter 10 verse 1 Romans chapter 10 we're reading from verse 1 it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved my prayer to God and my desire before God for the children of Israel is that they might be saved it says therefore because I want them to be saved, I do not do anything that will offend the Jews. I do not do anything that will go the contrary way unto the Jews that they will say, even though you are preaching and you say you want us to be saved, how can we be saved? Look at what you are doing. We are offended by your action. We are offended by anything you are doing and therefore he will not be able to contribute to the conviction of the people, to the repentance 
sinners of the people and to the coming to the Lord of the people. He says, I follow through and I follow after my desire. I want them to be saved and therefore I act in a way I will not be a stumbling block to their salvation. I pray with all my heart that they will be saved and I will not be the one that will destroy the effect of my prayer. I want them to be saved and therefore I deny myself of anything and everything that will hinder their salvation. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we're reading from verse 19. He's still talking about the fact that he wanted the people to be saved. And because of that, he will do everything. He might have to deny himself. He might have to give up some things forever just because others will be saved. He said, for though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. You see, when we're sanctified, that's what's in our heart every time. I want to win them over to the salvation of the Lord. I want to win them over to the life of holiness. And therefore, everything we do we, is calculated to help them and to draw them and to win them over. He said, I'm doing all this. I'm making myself a servant unto all that I might gain more of them. In verse 20, it says in verse 20, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew so that I will not offend them that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. In verse 21, it says to them that are without law as without law be not without law to God but under the law to Christ that I might gain always considering the ministry that I might gain them that are without law as the Lord has called us to preach the gospel to every creature as we approach those creatures as we live among those creatures and as we interact with them our action our behavior is conscious of the fact that our action may destroy the message of the gospel our behavior may destroy the impact of the gospel they have heard therefore we comport ourselves we conduct ourselves and we manifest the disposition of Christ and of the new creature and of the Christian that will gain others whoever they are in verse 22 verse 22 says to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak I am made all things to all men all things to all men everywhere i go i don't try to claim my right and stand on my right and demand my right and tell them they should bend i have more grace i should bend if they cannot bend i have more devotion to the lord and i know my calling therefore i should yield when they cannot heal and so he says i became all things to all men that I might by all means save some. I might by all means save some. That means whatever may come and whatever we may go through, we endure all things for the salvation of those who ought to be saved. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're reading from verse 10. Therefore, I endure. That's part of the Christian life. Therefore, I endure. That's the, the part of a matured Christian life, of a committed Christian life, of a consecrated Christian life. Not somebody who is uh, just, you know, at, at liberty and is flowing uh, everywhere and is, uh, you know, swinging uh, anywhere, acting uh, anyhow, and he does not understand. There are souls to be saved. There are saved 
saints to be sanctified and there are believers to prepare for the coming of the Lord and whatever will hinder the progress of other people whatever will distract the attention of other people from that heavenly goal and heavenly dest destination we, we repent of and we take away from our lives and Paul the apostle said therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ with eternal glory it says everything I do anywhere everywhere even when I have to endure I endure I don't say this calling is too much and this consecration is too heavy therefore I'm stopping here it says all things I'm ready to endure all things I actually endure for the elect sake that they also may obtain salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory what are you willing to endure what are you willing to deny yourself of what are you willing to give up that the people around you who are not saved might be saved that those who are saved might be steadfast solid and secured that the saints of god might be sanctified that everyone will be ready for the coming of the Lord. Let's take all this to heart and we go to the Lord in prayer and we say, Lord, now we understand we're not isolated in different uh, Christians that are just living for ourselves. We're living for the glory of God and we're living for the edification of others. We're living not to be an offense to others. We're living to evangelize as many as possible. God bless you. Please rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Examine your life. Examine your commitment. Examine your disposition. Examine your lifestyle. How are you living your life? How are you denying yourself? How are you committing yourself to the watch of the Lord and living to the glory of God? Edify others. Eliminate offense from your life and evangelize others as well. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.